I believe in you. I believe in you. You're the God of miracles. I believe in you. I believe in you. You're the God of miracles. I had to do that to Tammy. I love her. That's why. Hey, Amen. Touchdown. I understand. I get it. Psalms 149. Um, <clears throat> a lot, a lot. That was a good message that Brother Charlie brought this morning, man. It's really encouraging. Just, just blessed me and, and, and uh, encouraged me in some things in my life that I've been thinking about and praying about. And uh, it's just <clears throat> awesome to see. And I know a lot of us know this, but it's so awesome to see uh, like when God calls you to do something, He makes sure that He gets you what you need to get, you know, and, and He makes sure that uh, He brings the right people alongside with you. You know, it's really awesome how He talked about how, you know, when they got over there, you know, that they had never lived there before, and I heard Him talk a little bit about it today a little bit, but how they had never lived there before and things like that, so of course everything's new to them, of course. I mean, imagine going to another country and starting a ministry. I mean, that's pretty wild, you know. When you're so used to being here where we're at, and uh, uh, it gets over there, and they had no vehicle, you know, so they just had to do what they had to do, and and all that kind of stuff, and how God just provided for them, and and just now to where they're at today because of faithfulness, you know, and uh, you know, <clears throat> I've noticed that that <clears throat> a lot of things when God has us start something, that it's small at first. 
You know, sometimes it could take 20, 30 years to uh, maybe get kind of into some momentum. I know that sounds kind of crazy, but to get into some momentum and, and all that. And, you know, the Lord, um, that's one thing that I, I've never really paid too much attention to is trying to get big fast or trying to have something big. You know, I don't want anything that I don't, I don't want anything that, that, that there's nothing. I mean, how do I say that, Lord? I don't want to get over into something that I can't handle just because I feel like I want to get over into something. I don't know if that makes sense or not. But I want to go with, with the Lord's timing. I want to go with his, when, what his hour is, what he's saying, his seasoning. Uh, I want to go in, in the seasons that he wants me to go in. And, and all that. So serving the Lord really is simple. The Word of God is simple. If we'll just get into that, and we don't always have to, now let me just say this to some of you tonight, I don't know, maybe this will encourage you, but we don't have to have everything all the time, we don't have to know everything all the time, you know, and, um, you know, I've watched mom and dad, they came up here in 83, I was nine years old when we moved up here, and and all I knew at the time was, you know, well, dad's not doing his, his backhoe business anymore, he's starting a church, he's going to be a pastor of a church, that's all I knew, I really didn't understand, I didn't really understand what being a pastor was, I just knew you got up and preached, and you're at, at church. I mean, that's really the, the, as far as the knowledge or whatever. I'd grow up in, grown up in church all my life or whatever, but that's about all I knew, really, what was going on. And, and of course, I had to trust Dad that, you know, the Lord told him to come up here and this and that. But I've watched, I watched him start this church and, 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 move, and move in it and all that kind of stuff. And, and I always thought, well, you know, at some point, you know, it's going to grow. And at some point, it's going to be this. And at some point, it's going to be that. And I finally realized <clears throat> in my mid-20s, early 30s, that it really doesn't matter if it grows or not. Now, I know that sounds kind of weird maybe to some of you or whatever. What I mean is, all I care about is that I'm doing and they're doing and people are doing what God has called them to do. And when, when God, see, you got to be careful trying to get out there real fast and make something happen. You know, I mean, I've watched a lot of people I've watched a lot of people, and, and, and I've watched a lot of Christians, and I've watched a lot of preachers, really, to be honest with you, come into this town over the years. And they, this is what's going to happen. They come blowing in here. This is what's going to We're going to do this. We're gonna, and within two years, they're gone. You know, people get their own ideas of how they're going to do something. And you've heard Dad talk about that. You know, he'd get his own ideas, and he'd try something, and he'd flop within three months, you know. And then he'd try that. You know, we've got to have God ideas, not just good ideas. I mean, I have so many ideas in my mind constantly stirring. I'd like to do this here. I'd like to do that. I see certain people at the church. This would be cool for them. This would be awesome for them. It'd be good to have this, blah, 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 this kind of stuff. And every time I think about those things, there's still that, eh, that's there. It's not time yet. You know, and I feel, it's kind of like you feel like, you know, you, 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 see that, you see that dog in the backyard that's chained up to that tree, you know, and he's just like, ah, you know, he wants to go, but he knows he can't go nowhere because he's hooked there, you know. And sometimes that's how I feel. I have, I have big vision. I have big dreams. I have big things. A lot of us in here have big visions, big dreams. We want to see things. We want to do things. This and that. We want to make our mark, man. We want, to make a, we want to make that moment, you know, count for people's lives. And we have big dreams and visions, and it's all good, and we need to go for it and keep pursuing God and let him lead us into that. But there's a timing for that stuff. There's a season for that stuff. And you know what's going to keep you balanced as far as when to do it, when not to do it, how to do it, where to do it, what to do, is by the word of the Lord, by his secret place, by being, being with him, being intimate with him, spending time with him. He will hold you balanced. And thank God for that. Thank God for that. I mean, there's been times I've gotten ahead of myself, and it was just like, and you knew, it was just like, oh, man, why did I do this? You know, I should have waited because I know it wasn't time yet. Anybody ever been there before, you know? And so um, God has a plan. He has a purpose. He has a season. And I believe a lot of folks that are here tonight, you know, I really believe that you're, you're where you're at right now because you are hearing from the Lord. You know, you are waiting on Him. You are listening. You're, you're taking it one day at a time, so to speak. Amen? And, and you're allowing God to do things. But don't let the devil stifle that dream, that vision, that big, that big those, not just dream, but dreams that you have. A lot of you see yourself evangelizing. A lot of you see yourself uh, speaking you know, to people and saying things to people and it changing 
people's lives and atmospheres and towns and regions and stuff like that. There's nothing wrong with that. That's huge. God wants us to do that, praise God. And he'll open the door for you to do whatever it is he's called you to do. He'll open the door for you to do it. Just keep walking. I know a lot of us in here are disciples. You're walking. You're going, you're going for it. You're going for it. It's amazing how many people miss church on Sunday night. I don't understand it. Next time, say, uh, let's just say like Larry Huggins is going to be here next Sunday night, and I guarantee you right now there will be 150 people walking to this place. I love Larry. He's awesome. But I'm thankful that you're here, and I'm thankful that you're hungry. I'm not accusing people. I'm not making fun of people. I'm not saying anything, but come on, let's just be real about it. Who are disciples? Who really wants to be a disciple? we got a lot of disciples here, and it makes me excited every day. I love being a part of this ministry because we got people that are hungry and thirsty. You know, Sister Norma, she's one of them. I can put her on the spotlight here for a second. She gets here every hour before service and prays, man. She's faithful to do that because she knows how important that is. For this ministry, for, for, for her to obey the voice of the Lord and do what God's called her to do, but also for the people that like to join into that and, and be a part of that ministry, making a, an effect on the kingdom of darkness here in this region, you know? I mean, there's, there's several people here that serve and, and do what God's called them to do, and it, is, it, it makes an impact. It's a, very, it's a very serious thing. I mean, from the men's meeting to the women's meeting to the, to the whatever, there's, there's purposes for all that stuff. And it affects certain people certain ways, and deals, God deals with them certain ways and speaks to them certain things. And it's all important. We all have our part to play. But I'm thankful that I go to a church where there is true disciples. There's not one week that hasn't gone by in, in a few years now that I don't hear at least one to two things a week about how God did something outside these walls through somebody that goes to this church. I'm just being honest. I hear about it all the time. And there's some certain young people that are constantly contacting me and saying, we did this, we did this out here in the marketplace, blah, blah, blah. And it's just like, yeah, you know. So we're on the move. We're going. God's leading us into what he's called us to, 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 to be, not only as individuals, but also in the corporate body here for, as far as this ministry. Those of you that call this your local uh, home church, you know, uh, what, 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 what comes uh, to this ministry flourishes in your life as well. Amen. You know, just like when we give our tithes and our or when we give our tithes and our offerings, you know, a certain amount of that every month goes out to several ministries outside the walls of this place here. And just like Charlie said this morning, how, what a blessing, you know, that is. And I know there's people here this morning that picked up a child, you know, adopted a child to bless that child. That that's so big. If we could only see what that does in the kingdom for those people. <clears throat> What we sow into that ministry, thousands of other lives are affected and changed because we sow the Word of the Lord. Well, you mean giving a dollar every month to somebody? That's sowing the Word of the Lord to somebody. You're giving to somebody. You're sowing into their life. You're blessing them. Well, it's only a dollar. If that's what God told you to give, then that's the, that's the best thing you can do is obey Him at whatever He says. Amen? So I just want to encourage you that that we're on the move, we're going, things are happening. I got big expectation. I'm, I'm watching God do things. I'm watching God set people up in this, in this congregation. I'm watching God uh, grow people in this congregation. It just blesses me. I just encourage you to stay where your talent is. Stay, stick with what God's using you to do on a daily basis. Grow in whatever that is. If you're a prayer person, then you shondai more than you've ever shondai the next day. Then you just dig in and you get in there and you keep. If you're a worshiper, you just get in there and you worship. When you know God uses you to worship and things are changed in the atmosphere, then you just press in even more. Hallelujah. If you're one of those people that likes to witness out on the streets and let the power of God be in demonstration and things are happening, then by gosh, stay with that and keep going out and doing that as the Lord opens the door for you to do that. Whatever it is, you know, I know a lot of us here are very effective on our jobs, you know. That God usually will bring people to you to pray for them or something like that. Just keep moving in those areas, man. Let those open doors. Walk through those open doors. Don't let those doors close. I mean, you see an opportunity, man. Walk through it and go after it, man. A lot of desperate people that are hurting right now that, that just want to touch. 
just want to touch. The best thing is when they ask you to pray for them, and you don't ask to pray for them, but they ask you to pray for them. That's the best thing. Because you know they're hungry and they want something, man. And it's so cool. And don't say, well, I can't do it. Say, yes, you can. I can do it. I know we got a bunch of people in here that would do it in a heartbeat. I know that. A bunch of wild, actual Bible-believing Christians. Glory, hallelujah. Isn't that good, amen? Psalms 149, look at verse 1. It says, praise the Lord, sing to the Lord a new song, and His praise in the assembly of saints. Let Israel rejoice in their Maker. Let the children of Zion be joyful in their King. Let them dance, or excuse me, let them praise His name with the dance. Let them sing praises to Him with the timbrel and harp. For the Lord takes pleasure in His people. He will beautify the humble with salvation. Let the saints be joyful in glory. <laughs> Let them sing aloud on their beds. Let the high praises of God be in their mouth and a two-edged sword in their hand. You know, you've heard mom talk about that to your tongue, the two-edged sword there. That two-edged sword, one edge is your mouth in line and in authority with the, with the word of the Lord, and then God's word in the, on the other side of that tongue, man, that two-edged sword. The, the devil cannot stop your declaration. The devil cannot stop a believer's declaration someone that believes the word of the lord someone that speaks the word of the lord the devil cannot stop that word god is not and you heard charlie say this morning it was funny god's not sitting up there nervous about anything he's not worried about nothing he's already decreed and declared what he's going to have and what's going to happen on this earth and what's going to happen in his kingdom amen so it's our job to get in line with what he's saying and speak that believe that and listen let me tell you something we're all prophets we all can prophesy the bible says that we are speaking spirits and that he says things to us, and when he says things to us, most of the time he wants us to speak that out into the atmosphere. You get in here and you start talking about healing, healing will start manifesting. You get in here and you start talking about praise and worship, there's something about talking like I am tonight about praise and worship and about our tongues, where when you get in there and you start using your tongue to worship the King of kings and Lord of lords, the Bible says in several places that all of heaven joins in. You talk about having backup singers. Come on. He just wants us to agree with, he, with Him. He wants us to agree with heaven, but not only agree with Him, but be a doer of what we're agreeing to. You know, we could get into all that. You know, faith comes by hearing, hearing by the Word of God. Uh, you know, being a doer of the Word, not a hearer only. You know, we could get into all those scriptures. They're all there. A lot of us know those things. But what I'm talking about tonight is having our tongue line up with the way heaven's doing things. And I know the quickest way to get on my tongue to line up with the way that heaven's doing things is by praising and by worshiping Him. That's what brings God to the forefront. That's what brings God down. That's what brings His presence down. It should be our job every day wanting to be in the manifested presence of the Father. However you got to do it, just do it. If you're at work, if you're in your car, if you're laying down in bed, rest, whatever it is, if you can just take time during the day and invite the presence of the Lord in, it will revolutionize your life. Old habits, things that have hung you up will start to disappear and leave you alone and all that kind of stuff. There'll be that battle there sometimes where it's, you know, your flesh is pulling on you to do something, but your, but your spirit is pulling on you to do the other thing like that. Well, praise God, I've learned that just by opening my mouth and thanking the Lord of His goodness, thanking the Lord for His faithfulness, thanking the Lord for all He's done, just start bringing Him back to remembrance, all the stuff He's done for me and my family and my friends and all this kind of stuff. It just nullifies the devil. He has no clue what's going on on there's nothing he can do about it what happens to him it's kind of like when you're when your kids were younger or maybe when you were younger or something your parents said go to your room uh, why go to your room shut the door no tv no phone no nothing you sit there and wait that's what we used to have to do to shane we'd whip him and all that and, and stuff 
when we needed to. But one thing we found out about Shane is he didn't like to be alone. That was the biggest punishment we could do for him. Go to your room. We'll come get you when it's time for you to come out. And this is why. Bum, 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 bum. You know, he's in trouble. It's okay to punish your kids, you know, if they need to be punished. I'm 42. My dad still punishes me if I need to be punished. And that's okay. Sometimes you need a good slap. You know what I mean? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'll remember that. You got to catch me, though. <laughs> <laughs> he'll just wait till his time he'll come over when I'm asleep probably but it's kind of like the devil you know he's kind of like that kid that when you start praising and worshiping God he's just guys he just has to go to his room and there's nothing he can really do about it he's just there he's isolated nothing he can do about it you give him no room you give him no pleasure you give him no no nothing you don't give him anything praise and worship is um You know, <clears throat> praise and worship is a, is a thing where it's, it's I, I don't know about you, but I have a thankful heart to the Lord, and I love Him, and I thank Him. But sometimes you don't feel like praising and worshiping the Lord. Let's just be honest. Your mind's occupied, maybe, or you're just, you're having a, you know, you just feel like you're feeling cruddy that day, and just doesn't seem like things are going right, and the devil's taunting you, and he's laughing at you, and he's, well, look at you and this and this. You've been doing this for 15 years. Nothing's changed, which is a lie. Something's changed if you've been doing something for 15 years. You know what I mean? But he's always trying to accuse and, and, and blaspheme the word of the Lord that you know is true in your life. And he's always trying to set you up to get you over into misery land and all that kind of stuff. But I notice if I'll just simply just start out, thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. I mean, within three or four thank yous, it's like, here comes the presence of the Lord. And it says it, a two-edged sword in our hand. Now, you notice that praise and worship brings a fight sometimes on a good, on a, in a good way. You execute vengeance, and we'll get to that. You execute vengeance on the enemy when you praise and you worship the Lord. <laughs> what you're doing is you're singing the truth, you're thanking the truth, you're speaking the truth, you're loving on the truth, you're loving on the most powerful thing that's ever come to this earth, the Word of God. And there's nothing the devil can do. He cannot overthrow it. Jesus has already done it. He tried to overthrow and get Jesus to keep him from the cross, but Jesus went through and did what he was supposed to do, and that settled it once and for all. And what did Jesus say? It is written. That's it. It is finished. It is over with. It's done. Now if they'll just believe and whoever believes will follow me, that word that, that, that's sown into the, into the world, the word of the Lord, the life of Jesus Christ, the gospel, when it's sowed, if people will just agree with that and get out. Look, I don't want to just be saved. I want to walk in the kingdom. I think that's what God's trying to do. He's been trying to do that, but I really believe there's an emphasis on that in the world today, the church, Western world today, here in the United States of America, that look, folks, it isn't just about being religious and knowing God. That's the most important thing you can do is receive Jesus as your Savior. That's it, because it's about eternity. Amen? But while you're here, why not be like Jesus and do what Jesus did while you're here? That's what, that's what I believe God is trying to get over to the Western church today. That it's not about, oh, it's bad if you smoke, it's bad if you this, and you're focusing on all this stuff. It's about what Jesus did. If we'll focus on what Jesus did, all that other junk that's in our life that's trying to kill us and take us down will be washed away. When we're focused on doing what He's called us to do. And that's the truth. Because all of us have mind habits. All of us have mind hang-ups. All of us have little things here and there in our lives that we kind of trip over or, or just different things like this or there's some kind of religious deal, you know, in our lives or something like that. We all go through those things. But when we want the heart of the Father and we continue in it, those things will be washed and wiped away. The Bible says that we need to be washed by the watering of the Word. Continually. 
You continue in the Word next year, you'll be different from where you're at now next year. I guarantee it. The Word will do a work in you. The power of God will do a work on the inside of you. He'll give you revelation. You'll understand things that you didn't understand a year ago. You'll know some things you didn't know a year ago. You'll, you'll, you'll be able to move in more power and more glory and more victory in things that you didn't the year before. That's how it works. The Word of God is living. The Word of God is eternal. The Word of God brings life. The Bible says our outward man perishes, but we should be renewed day by day on the inside or inner man. Praise God. So, it's a thing where, <clears throat> I don't know if it's just me or what, but I am always, every day, in expectation, wanting something to happen, not only in my life concerning the Lord, but in other people's lives. That's a good feeling. That's a good thing to have every day. And I know there's a lot of people here, probably mostly everybody in this room more than likely is that way too. They want to see God move not only in their life, but they want to see God move in other people's lives. Amen. And that's big. And the thing is, is we find out who we are in Christ and then we give our supply. What is our talent? What is our supply? What has God done in us? So it says here, in verse 6, let the high praise of God be in our mouth and a two-edged sword in our hand to execute vengeance on the nations and punishments on the peoples to bind their kings with chains and their nobles with fetters of iron to execute on them the written judgment to this honor have all his saints. Praise the Lord. Now it says here in verse 9, to execute on them the written judgment. The written judgment is the word of God. God has already said, now see, we serve a God. <laughs> Listen, when you speak the word, you bring judgment on the devil. When you speak the word of the Lord in a situation, you bring judgment. If you're, if you're dealing with some kind of maybe sickness or, or disease or something in your life, and you speak the word of the Lord over your life, let's just say, for instance, use this for an example. When I was going through leukemia, okay, I needed white blood cells. I needed an immune system in my blood. So when I would speak to my bone marrow and command my bone marrow to be healed, because your bone, when you have a healthy bone marrow, it produces good blood. So when I would speak over my bone marrow, in Jesus' name, bone marrow, you line up with the word of the Lord. God didn't create me to have leukemia in my body. He didn't create my bone marrow to be destroyed. He created me to be healthy. So I speak to you in Jesus' name, and I say, line up, be whole, be what God's created you to be in the name of Jesus. I was speaking vengeance on the attack of the enemy. And there was nothing the devil can do about it. Only thing he could do about it is try to get me over into unbelief. That was his only chance he had. Or to get me over into some deal where, oh, forget it. This is not real. This doesn't work. This is all a bunch of hooey. So-and-so died, and this person died, and that person died, and they believed, they, they were a believer, and he tries to get you over into all this stuff to get you off focus off track of what the word says about you specifically and then he tries to use your mouth that God's given you to use with it as a two-edged sword to use your own mouth to come against you to cut your own head off and curse yourself that's how it works I've listen I know this and I know you know this but I've been around this long enough I know I know now, I understand that you know, things happen sometimes and people leave earth earlier before they should leave and because of disease or something like that. I understand. I know people in this place that have been affected by that greatly. I understand that. But we don't know. We only know about us. We don't know what people go through on the inside. I had a decision. I could only speak for myself. My dad couldn't do it. My wife couldn't do it. My kids couldn't do it. Tammy couldn't do it. People that were in this church praying for me day and night couldn't do it. Sister Norma couldn't do it. I had to make a decision on the inside of myself. Am I going to live or am I going to die? Am I going to give in to the attack of the enemy or am I going to stand by faith? And declare, and I think where a lot of folks miss it is they don't come before the Lord and say, Lord, where do I need to change? Because something's allowed this. I've allowed this somehow. I try to get that over to people when I talk to them about that kind of stuff because, listen, it ultimately comes down to us. 
It doesn't mean because someone gets a disease, they're a sinner and they've been sinning, anything like that. But sometimes we open the door to the enemy on these certain things. And a lot of times it's usually because of our own mouths. And the main thing God was talking to me about personally about my life was my love walk. I had no love walk. I didn't focus on love. I didn't focus on other people. I didn't, it was just like, whatever, yeah, I guess I like them if they like me. And, and you know what, well, if you want to talk smack, then take a hike, leave, move somewhere else. I don't even care. That was my attitude. That was my attitude. That was the way that I trained myself to live all my life. You do me wrong, okay, then I'll get you back. One way or another, I'm going to get you back. And that's just how I trained myself growing up. I was rebellious, and that's the way I looked at things, and I was taught right and all this kind of stuff. But you get into these habits, and then you get so far into these habits where the darkness comes in, and then you don't even think you're, you're, you're doing wrong. And you get into unforgiveness and hatred and bitterness and your dad and, and someone spiritually in your life that's over to you that, that, has, that knows way more than you do coming to talk to you about it and you don't even understand what they're talking about because you're like, you're just making this stuff up. doesn't even make sense. That's not even what's going on when it really is. And that's where I was at concerning my love walk with some folks. And immediately the Lord started talking to me about that. And I knew I knew if God's talking about this, then I'm wrong. And I immediately repented, and I immediately made things right, and I did it the way God told me to do it. And there was a couple other things in my life that he had me do. And this is what's wild is this was before I even knew I was sick. <laughs> he started getting this stuff done with me before I even found out, before I even knew there was anything even wrong with me, months before. Within six months before I even knew something was wrong with me and I had no idea, God had me deal with some things. He knew this was coming. And when I got to that situation in January 08 when they said you had leukemia, when I got to that situation, I had already knew on the inside the devil's defeated because of what I did some months back. There was something about that. And see, we get to, sometimes in our lives, even now today, right now, myself, three weeks ago, sitting there going, Lord, I'm tired of this, Lord. I've been coming to you with this. I've been seeking you. You've been helping me in all this. Boom. And all of a sudden, he gave me this fresh revelation about me. See, he wants to talk to you about you, not other people. He will talk to you about other people. He'll show you things, help, have you pray for him, whatever. That's good. Thank God, excuse me, for that. But he wants us to get lined up first. And he's not, listen, God isn't nervous about you. <laughs> he, he just wants to help you get to where you need to get to in this life. He wants to help you get what he, what he needs you to do in this life. But see, <clears throat> don't always look for the spectacular. Don't hold yourself accountable. Well, I guess I'm not doing nothing because nothing big's happened. That's one of the things the devil uses on me quite a bit. Well, you know, you just, you get up there, you talk to the same people all the time, and they already know what you're talking about anyways, but you're just up there talking, and, and you know, just, what are you doing? And, but that's, that's what he uses on me. There's nothing happening, and all this kind of stuff. Which is a lie, because there is stuff happening. There's stuff happening to me when I stand up here and, and preach the word of the Lord. Believe me. I mean, I learn a lot standing up here just listening to myself talk sometimes. Sometimes there's things I say with the Lord rebuking me, and I'm just, it's just coming out of my mouth, you know what I mean? <laughs> or love it on me, you know? But he wants to get us focused on, oh, am I really even making an effect? Yes, you are making an effect. You're in the kingdom of God. How can you not make an effect? You serve the Master, the Lord Jesus Christ, the King of kings and Lord of lords. How can you not be making an effect on somebody's life? Start believing that you have glory on you. Start believing that people are seeing the light of God on you. Start believing that people are seeing healing on you and prophecy on you and deliverance on you. Start believing that because that's who Jesus was. They saw it on him. And what was crazy is you had two different kinds of people. You had the people thinking that he was of Beelzebub. And then you had the kind of people that knew that he was doing something by the Father God. 
So you're always going to have critics. You're always going to have people that say you're in it for the money. You're always going to have people say you think you're better than others. You're always going to have people say that you're just weird and you're crazy and you're into this weird stuff. You're always going to have all this kind of stuff, but then you're going to have people that say, I need what you have. Please give it to me. And those are the ones you help. Jesus helped the ones that wanted help. Did you know that Jesus didn't pray for everybody he walked by that was sick? Several times it talks about he walked by. So we can't do it all. We can't touch everybody. I know a lot of us want to do that. I, there's a lot of times where I see certain things. I just want to, you know, I'm sitting in a restaurant and I see a child that's handicapped or I see something bad. It just breaks my heart. But I always check inside. Do you want me to go physically over there? And do something, say something, lay my hands on him, something. And most of the time, honestly, he doesn't open the door for that, for me. And I'm not afraid to do it, he just doesn't open the door. So right there, I'll just, right there under my breath, I'll look at that person or whatever, and I'll just speak life, and I'll ask angels to touch, and I'll ask Jesus to come visit and heal him and help him. And then one of the main things I ask, and I've learned this by Dutch Sheets listening to him, I ask God to have mercy on that person. I've been hearing Dutch Sheets talk about that, about don't waste any day where you don't speak mercy on somebody. Because God wants to have mercy on people. He wants to help them. He wants His angels to go and minister. There's angels, that want, there's angels waiting to be sent to go minister to folks. Amen. I'm thankful that I'm in a room, in a room with people that have hearts for the Lord. Amen. <sighs> So, it says, it says that, there's, there's, that the devil, that when we speak the word of the Lord, that there's execution on him. Now, <clears throat> flip, flip with me over to, uh, let's go over to, well, let's go over to Proverbs. I wasn't sure, but let's go over to Proverbs chapter 3. A lot of the stuff I'm talking about tonight is, is we've heard it and... <clears throat> All that, and that's okay. Faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of the Lord. Amen. <clears throat> so it's good to, to hear the word, but I guess, I don't know if, what I'm saying tonight really is, is our mouths are so effective. And if the devil can get us to shut up, you know, he, he, he has a hand. He has a hand there that he's, he's able to... You know, get some, gain some victory, I guess if you want to call it, if he can get us to shut up. Because if we shut up, we lose by default. If we don't keep using our mouth, we lose by default. Mark Hankins, Pastor Mark Hankins preached a message one time. I heard him preach it several years back, and it, it never, it, it changed my life. I've never forgot it. He said it was called, or he has a book out, actually, I've read it a couple times. Don't run at your giant with your mouth shut. And, of course, he's talking about David and Goliath. He didn't run at him with his mouth shut. He declared the word of the Lord over Goliath and told him what's going to happen to him because of the covenant. Amen? And the devil will try to keep us to keep our mouth shut. You know, and we, let's just say we think about a relative or we think about somebody in our life that's close to us or we think about some, a friend or something that's struggling and maybe going the wrong direction. Instead of us just saying, oh, well, yeah, I figured that's what was going to happen with this guy because he's a moron, he doesn't listen, and he thinks he can do whatever. No, instead of saying that, why don't we say, well, in Jesus' name, Lord, I thank you that he will come in, she will come in, that God will visit. Lord, give him an encounter with you, Father God. It's easier to do that than it is to do the other thing. Just as easy. We bless him. Guys, that works. It's real. It's super real. Amen. I mean, it, it, it works. The Lord will go after that person. He will. The Bible says to, to pray that God will send laborers into their vineyard, laborers into their walkway, that will deliver the word of the Lord to them, will deliver the gospel to them, that will bring them to the knowledge of Jesus Christ. When we do that, guys, it happens. It might not happen the next day by 12 o'clock. It could happen three years down the road. But guess what? I guarantee you, you're probably not the only one God's using to speak into that person's life. 
The devil hates it when we use our tongue. The devil hates it when we pray in the Holy Ghost. The devil hates it when we pray the will of the Lord. The devil hates it when we speak to somebody and say, you know what, Jesus will heal you if you'll just believe. Can you imagine what the devil does? Ah, I mean, he just freaks. Because he can't do nothing about it. It's true. A lot of us want results, man. We, want, we pull in the drive-thru, we want to be served within five minutes and we're ticked, you know. Sometimes we have instant results. That's why I bought a Keurig coffee maker. I got tired of waiting around for it forever, drip, drip. Keurig, you put that, put that sucker in there, push the button, boom, you have a cup of coffee within a minute. But we want instant results. We want it. You know, I've, I've had dreams and visions about this ministry and dreams and visions about you know, a lot of the people in this church and going out and doing things and being with them and doing things and seeing things happen and just being in total excitement and rejoicing and all that. I've had visions of this street out in front filled with people being healed like a healing crusade and salvations. I've seen this kind of stuff happen. I've, I've seen visions of people lined up down the sidewalk waiting to get into this building because God was moving in the glory cloud and the fire of God was on this building things happening. I haven't seen it yet, but I've seen it in the Spirit. And I want it to happen. When's it going to happen, God? When's it going to happen? And But you just keep pressing towards it, speaking it. Pressing towards it, speaking it. And we'll finally come into a season where that'll be in manifestation. God has showed you things as individuals. He's promised you things. You've had dreams. You've had visions. You've seen things. And those things will come to pass when it's season for them to come to pass. But during that time of going towards that mark and going towards that goal, you keep practicing. <clears throat> you keep praying. You keep praising. You keep preaching. It's like an athlete. If a race is coming up, a track athlete, and they know a big race is coming up, the championship's coming up, they're preparing for it. Preparing for it. They're they're not just waiting until the day it shows up and then they're going to get out there and go for a dead sprint. They're sprinting before the event. They're preparing before the event. All this prayer and all this intercession, all this corporate prayer we've done around here, all the meetings we've had where we've had just prayer meetings, all this stuff, it's been in preparation. It's been in preparation. I don't believe it's just going to be... <clears throat> Some big mega ministry that's going to have revival. I believe there's going to be revivals all throughout the United States of America and all these little places that are unheard of. And it might not be the masses that come. It might be just hundreds of people that come. But God is going to pour out His Spirit upon all flesh. we got to get our eyes off what we think it's going to look like or what we think is going to happen. And just get our eyes on Jesus and follow Him and let Him happen. Let it happen the way He wants it to happen. You think about it. You're part of a ministry that weekly somebody's touched by the Word of the Lord weekly. One way or another. We're part of a body here where the Word is spoken, the Word is in demonstration. We're blessed. And I'm not bragging, I'm not saying it because of us or whatever. All of us in here together, we get to see the Word in demonstration, not only on Sundays and Wednesdays, but every day during the week in our lives, we get to see the Word in manifestation because we've been taught that the Word can be in demonstration. That we can, by believing the Word of the Lord, go out and do the works that Jesus did. Amen. And I know it's working, and I know it's true, and I know it because I hear it out of almost everybody's mouth in here weekly about how God's using them to do something. You know, my grandpa is almost 90 years old. Right? Yeah, oh, 89, that's what it was. Okay, I thought you were going to be 90 this, this month. I thought for some reason. I better slow down and not get a year ahead, huh? <laughs> but, you know, he, he's been retired now for several years. You know, has a good life, awesome, great grandpa, great dad. But he uses his talent to go out and minister to people that are stuck in convalescent homes. Not able to go out and do what they want to do anymore and this and that. They're there for, they got to be there because they need assistance and need help and 
and, you know, and things like that. But he goes in there and he sings to them. Given his supply. People are being touched. People have given their lives to Christ because of that. And they're telling, I'm sure there's probably more people that he doesn't even know about and he won't know until he gets to heaven that he was able to touch by just singing the word of the Lord to them. That's a demonstration. He goes in there, he praises and worships. He leaves the atmosphere. He sings about the Father, sings about His love, sings about the cross. Leaves that in there. There's a seed in there. There's a presence in there because God comes down. He's able to help those people, touch those people. See, it's, it's just, we, we think it's just, oh, just going in there and singing. It's not just going in there and singing. It's going in there in obedience to the Lord and love from the Lord and leaving that love there that changes the atmosphere in people's lives, changes their hearts, changes their lives. Something that simple has so much effect, it's, it's, it, we can't even understand it. You know, us just praying for somebody has so much power, so much effect, that if we could only really understand what's going on in the spirit realm, we'd probably never, ever, ever stop. We'd want to do it all the time, you know what I mean? But the supernatural is nothing like the natural. It's nothing like it. Stick with the talent, the wisdom, the time that God's given you. Use it for His purpose. Now it says here in Proverbs 3, verse 1, My son, do not forget my law, but let your heart keep my commands. I heard Larry Huggins say it this way one time, and I wrote it down, it blessed me. It's, or in other words, stay in divine order with the Lord. So I'll read that again. My son, do not forget my law, but let your heart keep my commands or stay in divine order with the Father. For length of days and long, a long life and peace they will add to you. Let not mercy and truth forsake you. Bind them around your neck. Write them on the tablet of your heart. And so you will find favor and high esteem in the sight of God and man. Verse 5. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge Him, and He shall direct your path. That word acknowledge means to accept or admit the existence or truth of. To accept or admit the existence or truth of. The existence of what? His Word. The existence of what? His presence. See, promotion will come in your life when you trust Him. When you trust Him. And I know a lot of people, listen, I know you trust Him. You wouldn't be here tonight. You trust Him. You've given your life to Him. Promotion comes when we trust Him. Not only are we faithful to Him, but He's faithful to us. That's the ultimate. When God's faithful to us. <laughs> there are times see he knows he knows us inside and out he knows everything it's our bible says he knows every hair on the top of your head man he knows and so he sees where maybe we've been deceived in a certain area or something like that so he understands that and he's there he'll put people in our life he'll pick us to scriptures He'll do whatever he has to do to make it plain to us that we see where we're deceived or where we're missing it or something like that. Thank God for that. That's how faithful he is to us. I've learned so much just by serving him and following him and trusting him. He reveals things to us when he needs to reveal things to us, whether it's by correction or whether it's something good. Correction is good, but he'll reveal things to us, our heart, as we trust him. Amen? And so... It says, in all your ways, acknowledge Him, and He will direct your path. I like to say it this way. In all your ways, acknowledge His presence daily. His presence daily. Acknowledge His presence. When you wake up in the morning, acknowledge the presence of the Father God. When you're walking to the bathroom, when you get up in the morning, say, Father, thank you for your presence today. My ankle might be sore. My knees might be a little stiff. I might not have slept very well, but Father, I acknowledge your presence today. Nothing but good can come out of his presence. It's in the secret place of the Most High that we find who he is and what he is and what he has for us. We see things about heaven. We see things about him. We get an understanding of his love. He takes us deeper into his love. 
He rips things and cuts things out of us that need to be ripped and cut out, and He deposits things in us that we need in us. Glory to God. We have an everlasting Father, a Father of mercy and love and peace and joy. It's His delight to strengthen you. It's His delight to love on you. It's His delight to let Him feel His peace and His love and His presence. It's His delight to shake you and bake you on the floor. Praise God. It's His delight. You don't think He gets, doesn't get ticked off when the enemy messes with His kids? Absolutely. He's going to bring vengeance on the nations, on the enemy that have come against Him. We got a loving God, but we got a God that we got a God that kicks Heine, man. <laughs> I don't want to be nowhere on, on, on his bad side. He's a loving father, but he isn't going to play games with the enemy. We could read that in the word. It's very simple. God is not politically correct God. He's already said what he's going to do. He's get, I mean, he's given us the answer. You know? But he's a loving father. But he's a father that loves you. And he gets ticked when the enemy comes after you. But you know what? We use our mouths to counterattack or defeat the enemy when he comes. His feeble attempts. The Bible calls the enemy's attempts feeble. Just, he, he, he. He has no ground to stand on when it comes to the believer unless the believer lets him in. That's why it says resist. Resist, because you know the thought's going to come. Oh, you're going to get sick again. Resist and say what the Word says. And if you have to do it 15,000 times in five months, then you do whatever it takes to resist. See, God will always show you how to counterattack what the enemy's tried to do in your life. If you've struggled with fear, he'll show you how to keep that from bedding or, or di uh, getting root or planted on the inside of your mind. What he showed me was, it's, it, Mike, it's so simple. All you've done is you've allowed old mind habits to come back because you've always been that way, so you, you know, you, you've always gone over into that as soon as some, a bad report or something happens or you see something or hear something or the enemy, you, know, you, go, you slip over into what if or you slip over into, oh man, that, that might happen or is that really happening? Is that why I'm feeling that pain or is that why this is going on or whatever? You slip over into that and he gave me that revelation five weeks ago sitting on my couch on a Friday. He said, it's mine habits. And I said, that's it. That's it. And I said, what about it? And he showed me, he said, when that comes to you, when that, when that loudmouth devil comes to you and says, you're going to die again, don't slip over and entertain that, but say, no. Don't slip over into that habit of what if. The Lord spoke to me one day and he said, there's no what ifs in the Bible. I said, awesome. Thank you, Lord. And he said, there's only yes and amens. There's no what ifs in the Bible. There's only yes and amen. So be it. Done. It's done. It's over with. I've already done it. Here it is. Grab it and go with it. But maybe there's something in you. It, something gets triggered with you. And you're tired of that. And you don't want that anymore. And this and that. Then you go before the Lord and you keep seeking Him until you get the answer. The Word is always the answer, and we always can use the Word, but sometimes there's this time where He needs to make something. He'll give you that little nugget. That's why when I was at my doctor last month, and I've never had my doctor say this to me until that day, and I just got that revelation two weeks before my doctor's appointment, and the doctor looked at me and said, oh, you'll keep coming here every year because it's going to come back. And on the inside, it's like I saw the devil's face and I wanted to hit him as hard as I could hit him. It made me mad inside. But see, God will give you something. And what does the crybaby devil do? He has to attack like a crybaby and, get ven and try to get revenge to pull you off what God just gave you. 
Because he knows when you get a hold of something from the Father, the only chance he has is to try to counterattack that to get you away from what the Father gave you because he knows his victory. And that didn't even, that phased me for like five minutes. It kind of shocked me for a second. But on the inside, I'm like, nope. And I don't remember a word he said after that because I blocked it out. I physically blocked it out. I don't even remember what he said. Because on the exact, well, yeah, believe me, there was things I wanted to do, but I was tired of sitting in there already for an hour and a half. I just wanted to get the heck out of there. So I called my wife when I got out to the car, and I go, you know what the doctor just said to me? I told the situation. She goes, oh, that's, that's not even true. I had a choice for five, ten minutes after that driving home to allow that thought. See, the devil said that to make me miserable. It's not even true. It's not truth. How can something come back when it's not in you? Scientifically, the doctor has a leg to stand on. Scientifically, because that's how he studied. But he doesn't know what the word of the Lord says. That's the ultimate. That sucker, that stuff was burned out of me. I'm telling you. I know that. But you know how cool God is and how awesome he is? Ten minutes before the doctor demonically prophesied to me? He didn't know it. Nothing against him. I love him. He's an awesome doctor. He really is a good, he's good at what he does. I have respect for him. I care for him. This and that. But ten minutes before the doctor said what he said, God gave me a prophetic sign sitting in that doctor's room. And what it was, was I'd walked into that room, and when I walked into that room, when the nurse took me into that room, I just happened to kind of look up at the door. When I looked up at the door, I saw the number 10. It was room number 10. And I didn't think too much about it. It just kind of stuck out to me, though, for a second. And, and the, my first thought was, oh, that was my number that I wore in football in high school in eighth grade. It was number 10. That was my favorite number that I used to wear. That's the first thing that popped into my mind when I saw that number. I was sitting in there, and as I'm sitting in there, I'm just kind of waiting. I've been sitting there about a half hour. I'm just kind of like, all right, man, I just want to get out of here. I want to go. This is getting old. And I'm sitting there, and I just kind of looked up, and I looked up. The door was open, and I saw that number 10 again. And as soon as I saw it, I heard the Lord say, what does the number 10 mean? So I immediately pulled my Bible app up, praise God. Started searching out the number 10, and one of the meanings for the number 10 is a complete cycle, full cycle, or a completed cycle. In other words, it's over, we're moving into something new now. That's over with, that season's done, it's gone, all that. And I thought, praise the Lord, that's good God. And I knew what he was talking about because of the situation I was in at the moment, sitting in the doctor's office. And this, this visit here was the most peace I've had in probably 10 years, this visit. Because I got a hold a few weeks before about mind habits, and I didn't allow myself to get over into that mind habit while I was sitting there in fear. Because it's not real, it's not true. Okay, so I'm just being honest. So I'm sitting in there. God gives me this. I'm like, yes, Lord, this is what this is. It's a completed cycle. Thank you for that prophetic sign you just showed me right now, Lord. And then 10 minutes later, the crybaby devil tried to destroy the revelation and the, and the, and the thing that God just gave me about that prophetic sign. Oh, you know, and then said what he said. See, that's what the devil does. We can't let it waver us, though. I'm going to tell you, and my mom and dad know this because I don't share a lot. I t you know, when I struggle with things, I call them and talk to them about certain things. And I'm going to tell you, you can ask my wife. She's with me every day. Bless her heart. We've been married 20 years. It's been five years of wedded bliss. Amen? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just playing. Maybe one, yeah. Finally. But um, <clears throat> that word by the doc, that saying that he said to me that day, that would have tormented me for months before. Months. That's all I would have talked about. I would have woke up every morning thinking about what he, I would have heard his voice. It would have tormented me and tormented me and tormented me and tormented me. Just being honest. And torment, and a lot of you know what I'm talking about. It's not fun. It's a bad feeling. It does not feel good. It's miserable when you're living in fear. That has not bugged me since then. 
the thought has come. Remembering him say that. And when, when I remember him say that, I, I, I'm just being honest with you. And this is all because of the Lord, but I had to make a decision to believe the word. And it is almost like when he says, when he brings it back up into my mind, when I think about that and remember him saying that, it's almost like you get that fly swatter out and just, pow, and you move on. Dead fly, you pick it up, throw it in the trash, and you move on. That's what it feels like. Every time he brings that up, it doesn't affect me, it doesn't bother me, because I got a revelation from the Lord. And I know there's, uh, you guys in here, at least one time or another, have got a revelation from the Lord that has in, incredibly increased your life and helped you in major, major ways. Thank God for it. See, the devil always wants to keep you out of your purpose. God is saying, look, I'm here. I want to take you into your purpose. And I know we know that, but a lot of times our minds will hang us up and keep us from fulfilling. Let the Lord work on your mind. Let Him work on it. Let Him, wor Lord, work on us. I mean, you know, let our mind be conformed to you and not this world. Guys, we are firebrands, man. We have fire. We have the love. We have God. We have the King of Kings living on the inside of us. He grows us. He blesses us. He helps us. But man, do we have a lot that we can share on the outside to others. You're so full of glory. You're so full of Jesus. Everyone in here, man, I know you personally. You're, you're full of him. He, you love him. That's all he asks and re he requires is that you love him and that you serve him. And as you do that, man, whew, boy, he brings in all kinds of good stuff. Some of you in here, and I know this by the Spirit of the Lord tonight, that some of you in here, you're starting to see, you're starting to see uh, those prayers that you've been praying for concerning your family and your relatives and your kids and things, you're starting to see things become activated. Stay on it. Go even harder after it with reckless abandon, even harder after it. Because the time's here, man, where the prodigals are coming back. And they're going to be harvesters, praise God. You know, my son Caleb got up on Wednesday night and, and declared and prophesied that double was going to be on his generation. And he prophesied and said that double harvest will come in from his generation. That's big. And I'm agreement with that. There's a lot of kids that I used to have in my youth group here that are still out there goofing around. Haven't made a decision fully to serve Christ. And I'm just praying. I sick the Holy Ghost on them. Because I stay in contact with them through social media, and I see them and things like that. And every time I see them, Lord, I, not every time, but most of the time I say, Lord, Holy Ghost, get them. Holy Ghost, get them. Let them have an encounter with you, God. Get them, get them, get them, because they're called for this time. They're called for this purpose. They're not doing what they're supposed to do. you got greater things for them, Lord. And I get after them. But guys, from the oldest generation in this place to the youngest generation in this place, we have fire. We have glory. We have healing. We have love. We have prophecy. We have the Word. It's our time to shine, guys. Arise, shine, for the light has come and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. And the Gentiles will see the light and the love what comes with the light? Everything God is comes in that light. If it's healing they need, they'll have it. If it's, if it's deliverance they need, they'll get it. If it's love they need, they'll get it. It's in the light. And you are the salt in the earth. You ain't going to be loved by everybody. But you're still that salt. You're still that light. It doesn't change. You could have one person on your street that loves you and the rest hate you. It doesn't change who you are in Jesus doesn't change a bit <laughs> glory hallelujah so this week and for the rest of your life 
Use your tongue, that two-edged sword. Use that word that God has given you. And you just decree and declare it, even if you have to declare that same word for ten years. You decree and you declare it. That vision that God has shown you, those things that God has shown you, don't just stick them under a blanket and hide them. Keep them before your face on a piece of paper. Pull them out every week, every few weeks, and read those words that God has given you. And just rehearse those in your mind again. See those dreams, those visions in your mind again. And start thanking the Lord for that. That that's coming, Lord. Thank you. It might be tomorrow. It might be two years from now. I don't know when, Lord, but I believe it. And I'm going that direction. And I'm believing it. And I'm heading that way, Lord. And I'll be ready when it's time. You know, I had, there were some pictures that surfaced on Facebook the other day. My mom posted about that outreach we had with Joan Pierce on the street out here several years back. And Brother John was there, and he was trans. I was up there sharing my testimony and giving a salvation call, and he was translating for me, and he was in the picture, and then Sister Joan was in the picture, and there were some other folks in the picture. But the thing, when I saw that, it rekindled that vision I had just a month ago about just seeing that street packed with people. And us as a church, serving people, people in our church, going out as a congregation, laying hands on people, people getting delivered and healed and set free in front of our building right here, man. That stirred that back up, that vision I had from seeing that because of the situation it was out there. I know God wants to do things, and He's doing things. And we're headed in. And I don't think it's going to be like, a, like I don't think it's going to be a scene of like revival's past as far as just one place that everybody in the world goes to it's because they're going to be all over the place there's going to be fires burning all over this country from mountains to the valleys everywhere and it could be a group of 100 people and two or three 10 15 people come in a week to get delivered saved and set free and healed that's revival that's the blessing that's encouraging. Amen. And we're part of it. We are revivalists, guys. We bring reviving into the dying and the lost. Amen. Dad, do you guys have something? I don't know. Anybody? Before I wrap it up here. Okay. Thank you, Lord. Uh, the Lord gave me the word uh, heart murmur. <clears throat> heart murmur. Is there anybody here that uh, means something to you? Heart murmur? You? You? Come on up if it means something to you. Yeah, come on. Let me know, CJ, if there's somebody on the online that means something to If you're on watching us online and that means something to you, just contact CJ and let him know so he can pray for you. Come on up, guys. heart murmur specifically okay okay you too oh okay well everybody let's agree stretch your hands out toward our sisters in the name of Jesus father I thank you when you speak you don't speak a word with no power in it and you have spoken that you're coming against heart murmur tonight so in Jesus' name, I release that power, the power of that creative word. And I say, heart murmur, be no, be no longer in this body. Leave this body now in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. And I come against that spirit of intimidation and that spirit of fear that would harass my sister. I command you to leave her in the name of Jesus. I speak peace. I release the peace, the same peace that stilled the storm that Jesus left with us, I release it into her mind, over her circumstances. Uh, this is what the Lord is showing me right now. The enemy's been trying to build up pressure on you, kind of like pressure, you know, will build like in a volcano, and then eventually there's kind of an, ex well, not kind of an explosion, there is an explosion. And the, the Lord is showing me that the enemy has been coming at you from different uh, perspectives in different ways and in different things, and he's trying to put pressure on you trying to you know build this up to where it's going to cause a lot of disruption in you but the lord says trust me with all of it 
let go of it. Give it to me. It's all going to come out right and in my time and in my way. And when that pressure comes, you just look up to me and say, Lord, you are my God. You are my strength. You're my wisdom. I give this to you. You're dealing with it, and it'll be done exactly as your plan and your purpose uh, prescribes in this situation. And so we come against that pressure. We command it to back off in the name of Jesus. And I say that the life of God and the strength of God is hers tonight. In Jesus' name, hallelujah. And Lord, we agree for charity, whatever this situation is. We agree, Father, let your spirit come to her heart right now, her physical heart, and heal. So we speak life and healing into her heart. Lord, let that adjustment come in her life. Minister to her, Father. Break through that wall of pain and, and uh, uh, that lie the enemy's uh, trying to use against her. We speak truth, penetrating truth. We say truth trumps the lie tonight. God, let angels visit her in her bedroom if need be. Let dreams and visions come. Let people come into her life that will help her walk in that fullness of what you have for her. But we agree tonight for healing in her body in the name of Jesus. And, Lord, we agree with Norma. We say that her heart is whole and healthy. Whole and healthy. Whole and healthy in Jesus' name. I thank you, Lord, that the next time she goes to the doctor, he will be amazed that she doesn't have a heart murmur because of who you are. We release that word of power and strength to her tonight. Yes, 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 yes. In Jesus' name. And, Lord, I thank you for that energy, that divine energy. Lord, when we decide to follow you, you give us the power and the energy to do it. And so, Lord, I thank you for that energy and that peace that she has right now in her body, in her being. In Jesus' name. We thank you for it. Amen. Amen. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Anybody dealing with uh, anybody know anybody is dealing with blood clots or has blood clot issues? Anybody? Ted does. Okay, can we pray for him? Anybody else? Uh, maybe. Okay. Well, praise the Lord. Let's just pray for Ted right now. Father, in Jesus' name, we we lift up Ted right now before you, Lord. And Father, I thank you in the name of Jesus Christ for healing in his body, Lord. I thank you that his veins work correctly, his his uh, blood works correctly, Lord. I thank you for whole, clean, pure, perfect blood in Ted's body. I speak to him, uh, to his blood right now, and I command healing right now in his body in Jesus' name. And Lord, I thank you, Father God, for the opening doors in his life, for speaking to him, for dreams and visions, and healing to come into his life in the name of Jesus Christ, Lord. I thank you that he fulfills the will, the plan, the purpose that you've called him to do on this earth, Lord. I thank you for the love that you have for him, Father. And I thank you, Lord, that his blood is healed and whole in Jesus' name. Devil, take your hands off my brother now in Jesus' name. And we speak healing into his body in the name of Jesus, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Brian, Brother Brian, bless you, brother. <laughs> Hallelujah. I had a, Lord gave me this earlier, and, um, and then John just nodded at me. Um, the Lord wants his church to know he's got a new gift that's coming in the manifestation of himself in the service that will bring a new level of joy and peace and celebration. And it's a, a, a gift that will be noticed in that joy, peace, and celebration. Lighthearted, you know, it'll be like the Feast of Tabernacles, you know. <laughs> and, um, and this is coming... And I would say very, very soon. We're, we're right on the edge of it. The last, uh, this last week, God has been bringing me to scriptures that say awake or awaken. And it's like, okay, Lord, help me to awake. <laughs> you know? And he's been showing me that this year, he had told me at the beginning of the year this was a Psalm 117 year, and that we were to, to do Psalm 117 all year, which is just praise and worship, acknowledge him. And he told me, he said, we are already in the spiritual season of the Feast of Tabernacles. 
that he has he has already shifted some things completed some things and that this year we're in that time that if we will just celebrate him all year then what you're saying will happen he will come and manifest himself in that celebration in that praise and it'll be joy it'll be he it'll be all that he is all that he is to us so i agree with that i believe that we are in the feast of tabernacle celebration season right now and if and this is what he was showing me is john wake up you know step into this start doing this man start celebrating you know when israel when it would come around on the clock or come around on the calendar every year they didn't sit back and say well god uh, do you want us to go do the you know no it he says it's on the calendar step into it come and do it show up participate and i'm telling you if we'll do that we will see him he's going to do things just in us praising him this year i agree with that brother that's a good word that's a word of confirmation to me Father, I thank you in Jesus' name right now, Lord. <clears throat> the callings and the giftings on Brian's life, Lord, since day one. Father, they're still there. They're still moving. He's operated in some, Lord. He's operated in it over the years. But, Lord, you have more. You have more operation. You have more things you want him to do, Lord. And, Father, I know that you know, Father God, what you've called him to do, Lord. And I thank you that you've revealed that to him. And, Lord, I thank you that the steps that he takes are ordered of you, Father, and, Lord, I thank you in the name of Jesus Christ that the will, the plan, and the purpose is played out in Brian's life, Lord. You know, I just, I just am so aware of, uh, you know, you've, you've grabbed a hold of what the Lord has wanted you to do many, many years ago. And uh, there is more that he wants you to step into. And it, hasn't, it isn't going to, I'm just aware of my spirit that it isn't going to lessen, but it's going to grow, actually. There's more growth. There's more things that he has for you. So it's not over yet, and you're not going to really even slow down, really. You're going to gain more momentum, but it's going to be a, a godly momentum. It's going to be his story, actually, what he's created you to do and what he's created you to walk out. So, Father, in Jesus' name, I thank you that as Brian grows and as there's more momentum in the Spirit and, 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 and into the calling and into what you've called him to do, Lord, I thank you that he has wisdom, revelation, and knowledge to do that, Lord. And Father, I thank you that it's done in your timing, Lord, as he walks with you, Father. And I thank you that the fullness of the Lord comes upon him, Lord. The healing of the Lord, the fullness of the Lord, the joy of the Lord, hallelujah, abides and resides on the inside of him in the name of Jesus. I thank you for it right now, Lord. And the Lord was just showing me it, the word that you just gave. If you'll do what you just said and just on purpose do it every day and praise him and magnify him, that release comes. And it's going to come in areas that you don't even really know you need release. But there's going to be a shifting. You see, the Lord is he's making you into a new wineskin right now. He's taking you out of the person that... Uh, maybe you have been in his kingdom before and in the things that uh, he's used you and he's going to shift you into the person he has made you to be now it's really promotion it's really uh, an activation of some things that he's been working in you for a long time and the enemy is resisting that in you and our our tendency as a human is even to resist it especially when we don't fully understand it yet but God says, if you'll praise me, there'll be a release. Things will re be released off of you that shouldn't be on you. And things will be released to you from heaven that should be in you. And you'll be transformed into that person, into that one. And things will begin to happen inside you first, in your mind second, and around you third. As you enter into that place of release. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. That's good stuff. I received that one for me. Because that's really what it's about. He's shifting us. He's shifting us. Yeah. A friend of yours that has blood clots? Yeah, come on up. Anybody else that speak to?
Ernie's his name? Okay, let's just pray for Ernie. Father, we lift Ernie up right now. We ask you to have mercy on him right now, Lord. You know his situation. I don't, but you do. And so I'm asking you for mercy right now. I, Lord, I thank you right now that his blood is whole, that his blood functions normal, that his heart beats normal in Jesus' name, that veins open, blood clots go from Ernie now in Jesus' name. By the authority in the name of Jesus Christ, I speak healing over Ernie right now, Father. Let it be a sign and a wonder to him, Father God. And Lord, I thank you that you'll use this time in his life, this healing in his life, to speak of your goodness and your healing and have an awesome testimony for others, Lord. We ask you for complete healing in Ernie's body in the name of Jesus. And Lord, as Royce shares the word, the living word with him, Lord, I thank you that it becomes more real to Ernie the next time he shares and has that opportunity, Lord. I thank you that your anointing, your power, and your glory and your love is upon that word out of Royce into Ernie in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Praise God. Let's stand up. Hallelujah. Thank you for it, Lord. We have a few prayer requests here from people that um, they've asked for prayer specifically. There's a... a uh, Brother Steve Connors, actually, uh, his two of his brothers were have been diagnosed, one with lung cancer and the other one with leukemia, two of his brothers. So we want to pray for him. One's name's Gene. The other one's name is John. And then uh, there's also an um, an unborn baby. Oh, okay. <clears throat> this unborn baby, uh, her name is Lucia. She's not born yet. Uh, and uh, the problem is it's, it's Grandma Maria's relative. Uh, it has, uh, instead of its blood vessels going all over its brain like it should, they're clumped up. And, and if she has the baby naturally, it will kill the baby. So they can't let her go in labor. They have to take the baby, cesarean. But so we, she needs that baby, Lucia, needs a miracle those those blood veins need to spread out amen and she needs to carry her full term and them do cesarean before she goes into labor okay okay and then another uh uh person by the name of pat uh has been diagnosed with cancer as well in their body so let's pray father in jesus name right now lord we hold gene we hold john we hold pat up before you right now we command cancer to die and to get out of their body in the name of Jesus. I ask you to have mercy upon these three people right now, Father God. I thank you that you visit them. I thank you that laborers come into their vineyard, Lord God, to speak healing, to speak the truth. Let them have encounters with you, God. Cancer, get out of their body. Be healed in the name of Jesus. John, Gene, Pat, I speak to you in the Spirit. And I command healing right now to flow. Healing angels to go and to minister to these people right now in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. And Satan, take your hands off this baby Lucia right now. You foul devil, loose there now. Take your hands off infirmity, disease. Go now from this baby in the name of Jesus Christ. We command you to take your hands off this child, and we command healing to flow right now. Father, we ask you for a miracle in Jesus' name. Let this baby's brain be whole. Let this baby's body be normal in the name of Jesus Christ. We speak peace to the mother. We speak peace to the father. We speak peace to the family, Lord. And I thank you for touching that baby right now. Let the fire of God consume that womb right now in Jesus' name name lucia we speak to you we say be healed in jesus name i agree with a miracle i agree with healing i say the healing will go forth now in the name of jesus this baby will grow up and be what god has called this baby to be in the name of jesus you take your hands off devil right now in jesus name and we say this baby will be healed and whole from the top of her head to the soles of her feet. And she will be a woman of God. And a sign and a wonder that will touch the nations in the name of Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. I can't wait to hear about the testimony, Lord. <laughs> hallelujah, Lord. I thank you for my family tonight, Lord. I thank you that we're one in the Spirit. We're one in the Lord. Hallelujah. And I thank you, Father God, that you've created us to, to bring our supply to this world. Hallelujah. 
And Father, I thank you for the gifts, the talents, the equippings from you. Father, I thank you that you use us by the Spirit of God for your glory this week, Lord. Give us divine appointments. Give us God appointments. Bring people across our path that we can bring love and deliverance and healing to in the name and salvation to in the name of Jesus. And Lord, I decree and declare the favor of God, the blessing of God over every single life in this building tonight, God. And we thank you that angels go before us and prepare the way of the Lord. Hallelujah. And we will listen and we will obey your voice, Father. We give you all the praise and all the glory, Lord, that we can gather in your name, Jesus. And Jesus, we love you tonight. And we thank you for what you're doing, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen.